This is ABC News Viewpoint. Reporting live from Northrop Memorial Auditorium at the University of Minnesota, Ted Koppel. Someday, perhaps someday soon, someone will be writing sociology papers about the phenomenon of America with a K. It wasn't the program itself. Most people hadn't even seen it before deciding that they didn't like it. There was something visceral about the level of dislike generated by this miniseries, long before it ever got on the air. It was as though its critics wanted to damage it, to prevent some terrible consequence that would flow if America got on the air. Well, it did. It wasn't as big a hit as its supporters had hoped, but it wasn't a disaster either. Last night, after 14 and a half hours of airtime, America faded to black. And tonight, we're going to examine some of the fallout. What was it, ultimately, that bothered people so much? Let's take a look. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the for which one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. America. 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 I'd say America is the right wing's ultimate paranoid fantasy come to the tube. The Soviets are portrayed as dark uh, and demonic individuals who we cannot negotiate with. Andre, the colonel, may smile a little bit as he's breaking up America into five different countries, sending people to mental hospitals for drug-induced behavior modification. There have been so many bad things which created your antisocial behavior. We're going to help you forget those things. That kind of thing is, uh, is Soviet bashing. So the aim of this film is self-evident. It's produced with the most malicious intentions. To spoil the atmosphere, to break the relations, to paint the Soviets as the worst enemy. The problem for me about this program is that it adds to that anti-Soviet hysteria that is so uh, much a feature of various bad points in our history. McCarthyism, the period after World War I, of the red baiting, and all the rest. Let me tell you what the Soviets are saying about the United States uh, in their uh, propaganda is uh, something unbelievable. I just wished I suppose this is polyamorous of me, that the Soviet Union and the United States could someday reach a point where we didn't have to bash each other and make boogeymen out of each other. And I thought it was very poor and very badly done. It's a fantasy. It's not real. Uh, it is not directed, you know, against the Soviets. It is uh, directed in terms of our own perception of ourselves our own character and our own, own uh, need to address the issues of, uh, of what it takes to make a democracy function. I think people have a knee-jerk response to it, which is, oh, this is really what a pro-Reagan, anti-communist um, film, and it's not that way. It's not that way at all. It it's really explores what freedom is about. I wish that people would get as mobilized over real, real events in the world as they are over this piece of fiction. It seems to me pretty unrealistic that, that such an event could take place easily. And I, don't, I do think that people in this country would defend the country. I don't think we would just sit passively by and let another nation take us over. I lost faith in everybody. Nobody wanted to risk anything for anybody else. Everybody afraid they were going to lose what they had. They knew it was bad. They were just afraid it'd get worse. I was upset when I saw uh, Americans 
which uh, behave in a manner that I felt was cowardly. Uh, I wanted to get up and really uh, react to that. I also object to the general portrayal of people who are for peace as weakening the moral fiber of the country. I consider myself part of the moral fiber of the country. The whole message of this thing is to strike out at liberals or anyone that questions the direction this country is heading in. Was that the plan all along? You just neglected to tell me you and the Russians were starting another country. Of course not. You know, I, I never noticed you being particularly interested one way or another in being American. And the whole time I've known you, you've never expressed much interest, much less took part. Now, all of a sudden, it's important for you to be an American. Damn, I am so tired of this. I'm an American bull. Where was all that patriotism when it counted? Where was that willingness to sacrifice? Nobody wanted to join the damn army to defend the country unless they got paid well. Nobody wanted to give any time to, to public service unless they could make a career out of it. And I didn't notice a lot of us giving up our lives in the last 10 years. It is clearly hostile towards the United Nations, and it is very unfair to this organization, which is a universal organization. Uh, which tries to crystallize the, the commitment of uh, all member governments to peace and to cooperation. Uh, a lot of people are going to zero in on uh, the film uh, being uh, perhaps a little bit boring, slow moving, uh, the film being uh, a little bit silly. Uh, they might zero in on technical questions. But uh... for us, you know, who have experienced Soviet atrocities and Soviet uh, imprisonments and uh, occupation and so on. And it is maybe a good way of showing the Americans how Eastern Europe looks like, That's what right. what it looks like. I'm puzzled by and I'm worried that an American audience without that experience uh, won't understand those scenes and will maybe just laugh at them or see them as not very important. Totalitarianism doesn't need armies. It only needs to control a couple of things. The media and the ability to dispense privilege to some and withhold it from others. And of course, a weak and divided people helps.